Hey there Django enthusiasts, welcome to our epic 5 hour journey where we will push the limits of Python's most popular web framework. Get ready to build, learn and explore. From simple to advanced, we will tackle 5 real world projects that showcase Django's incredible versatility. You will discover how to harness its power for your own application. First we will create a to-do app that covers the fundamentals. Then we will integrate APIs with a weather app, followed by a music player that showcases more complex features. Next up, a blog application that highlights content management and finally a finance management that demonstrates Django's prowess with data handling and calculation. Throughout this journey, you will master user authentication, database management and API integration. Whether you are new to Django or looking to level up your skills, this video has got you covered. Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. In this video, we will build multi-user to-do application with the help of Python Django. Let me give you a glimpse of what we will creating. Multi-user to-do application needs user authentication. So first user needs to sign up using username, email and password. So we enter username is Bulla and our email id is bulla at the red gmail.com and our password is and now we sign up as you can see that we transfer to login page now we have to enter the username so our username is bulla and our password is as you can see that we transfer to our to do page in this page we will create our task so our task is I have to do 5 DSA questions add task you can see that our to do is added now I want to edit this task so edit this task I want I have to do 5 DSA questions so update task as you can see that our task is edited now I want to delete this task as you can see that our task is deleted now I want to log out this page so I as you can see that it transferred to the login page before we begin make sure you have python and django installed on your machine first of all we need to install python and django so we install python in our machine so, so download the latest version of python so install windows installer and download and install it now now we have to install django in our machine simply just type uh, pip install so you can see that i already installed in uh, in my machine you can also install it in your machine now i am going to create a django project so open your command prompt Uh, and type django admin start project to do application so django created a to do application as you can see that to do application is created now we have to code in this so we write code as you can see that our vs code is open Django has created a to-do app. In this to-do app, manage.py we have got and in settings.py we have to write our application name. So our application name is now we have to create a models.py file. So models.py in models.py we have to write a code from Django dot dv import 
models from Jaguar country dot auth dot models import user so this line imports the models module from Django database abstraction layer. The models module will provide tools for defining and provide with database models, which are Python classes that represent database tables and their relationships. And this line imports the user model from Django authentication framework. The user model represents the user table in the database and is a part of built-in authentication system provided by Django. in database so now open your terminal and uh, redirect to your project folder cd to do and uh, type command python manage dot py make migrations to do to do is our project name. it will be migrations now we have to run one more command is python manage.py migrate now create our super user python manage.py create super user um, And in my address is bulla and the gmail dot password is password is too short right so our super user is created successfully first of all run one more command python manage dot py uh, run server so this command gives our gives me our server local server so our django is successfully created now open admin page enter username our username is bulla and our password is you can see that our admin page is local now open user only one user is there so now now we creating our template folder so folder name is templates in templates folder we store our all templates like html files now we need three template which is name is sign up and login and to do so first is sign up dot html and, and second template is login page so HTML. and third is our to do page so to do dot html so in sign up html first of all we have to load static using html file without load static we can't load our static files such as css and images and javascript so first of all we need a load static now we type our html code Our title is sign up. Now this time I am not writing any CSS because I already write this CSS. So don't wasting on time on CSS. Only on we write HTML code. So I added CSS files in our Django project. And now I am adding some font links. So 
or paste in head and control save now in body create a div dot sign up login in this div one more div is add div dot sign up box and in this div we have to create a form form and this time we need no need of action method equal to post in this form now add csrf token for security purpose and now create a div dot heading now in this right heading sign up now we need to link our uh, style sheet in this html code so write link and write static CSS index dot CSS create one more div for style and just like this. and now create div dot field in this we create our username and control s now we need input so input dot our class name is imp and the type is already text and it is required and placeholder enter your user and input name is name equal to fl name is used for in our models so we store this input in our models and now we create one more div dot field in this div we create our mail and input box input dot in and it is a email and it is also required and its name is email so this email is we save in our models and now we need one more div for password div dot field and in this we save our password password input for password input is password and our class name is imp and our name is pwd our input name is password so pwd and it is also required so everything is done now we need to submit this form so we need to submit button so div dot field and in this input box for submit input dot submit button and its type is submit and its value is sign up so our form is completed now we design more this so one more thing is added div dot field and in this we already have an account and we provide one more link so we type in anchor tag anchor and we have to transfer into login page so we type login and its class name is anchor name so our sign up page is completed now we have to check this 
our sign up page is working or not so open your terminal now type python manage.py run server Come on. Um, we are not in the in this directory so redirect to our project directory now type python manage.py run server now open this link first of all we have to create our url so we have to create a url of sign up so remove this commands so when user is on url of a sign up page so when user is at home page so we redirect to sign up page so right use dot import views from library so I'm going to go import views and that's it now we have to write a view function of sign up so go into views so there is no views file so we create a new file of views.py so now from django dot from django dot shortcuts import render and redirect so basically render is used for uh, rendering an html file and redirect is used for redirect from one place to another so now we write our boot function of sign up so def sign up when user request so render no return return render so we have to give our sign up page dot html now run our Django project so as you can see that our sign up pages can now we have to perform user when we enter this username email so when we submit this form that is not submitted because we not connect this form with models so we have to connect with models so if request equal to request the uh, dot method equal to equal to post so when user submit forms with the username so username is came into this with the help of django get method request dot post dot get so we have to get full name we have already gave this in this so this is a that now we want email id so request dot post dot get email and now we have to say a password our name is pass pw now we printing our uh, username email id and password in console so print now when we submit our form ayush ayush at the gmail.com 
password is given to your and now sign as you can see that nothing is there now you can see that our username email id and password is came into the console because we print these three into console now we have to store in the user so Django provides uh, user authentication so we store this in Django users so we have to import a user from Django from from Django dot country dot auth dot models import user so we have to store our email id username and password into models so we know in need our models so our model name is from to do import models from to do dot models import to do that's it now we have to create our user so my user dot objects dot create our user create user and with the help of username so username is fnm and our email id and uh, password and we have to save in our models so my user dot save and uh, we have to redirect to our login page if the user is sign up so return redirect login Our sign up page is completed. Now we check our sign up page is working or not. So username is Amri Amri at the red gmail dot com. Password is going to be given. And now sign up. Now we have to check our data is stored in database or not so open your admin page and check user so nothing is there now we have to create one more file because our data is not showing in our database so admin dot by so first of all we have to import admin from django dot country admin and we have to also include our model name is to do so from to do dot models import to do and we have to register our model in two admin sites so admin site to do that's it and control save now refreshing our admin page so you can see that our to do is to do model is created in admin side but there is nothing now we have to create one user um, let's its name is umri and its email id is umri and there are gmail.com password is 
and now select because we not made our login page this time so now open admin page and check our user is created or not so you can see that our user is created umri at the gmail.com now we have to make our login page now we copy the code of sign up because these all are same control copy and then now paste it and in this we have to change some login and the title is our login now we have to delete username and fill the password yeah okay don't have it now now don't have an account means we have to transfer into sign up page sign up that's it now our login html is completed now same now we have to write our url of login so path then login then views dot that's it now we have to create a view function of uh, login so login view function of login so dev login request so we return our login page and uh, we have to render our login HTML. So login dot HTML. That's it. Control S and now now we again sign up Tommy. Yes. Tommy at the red gmail.com password is one two three one two three sign up some yours so control s now we checked our code is working now so our code is working our page now we enter our username username is valid email address will be under the gmail com what do you want to do and now we sign up you can see that it transferred to our login page means that is working now we have to write our view function for working so if the request dot method equal to equal to post then we need to get our username and password so username we store in fnm fnm equal to request dot post dot get in this we get fnm and our password is stored in pwd pwd equal to request dot post dot get now we print our username and password now save control s now open your terminal now go to home 
and again enter username tiger tiger at the red gmail.com and now sign up and now enter username so our username is tiger our password is and now login so we check our code is working or not you can see that our username and password is kept now we have to authenticate with our user so we have to import authenticate login and logout from Django. So from Django.contrib grip dot or so dot import authenticate login and logout and also let's now now we have to authenticate user with the uh, username and password so create user variable user equal to authenticate and in this we have to pass request and username equal to fnm and password equal to pwd and if user is not none then we log in request and user our user and a redirect to our to do page else return redirect redirect to login that's it our login page is successfully created there is one mistake now we check our login page is working or not so enter tiger and password is one two three one two three and now login so it redirect to our to do page but our to do page is not created this time so it is created an error so now we have to create our to do page now copy the code because it's a boilerplate code so control copy and now paste it in to do page and we have to add one more CSS file. So, and its name is style. styles.css. And now our heading name is get things done. Now we have to remove unnecessary things from to do. So we don't need of username, so we remove this, and we also no need of password, so we remove, and we no need of line, so we remove, and no need of submit. This is also not. And no need of this. So we have to give our to do. So we need a import import and type is text and class is int and name is title because we have to store in title and it is required. Placeholder is and today's. Now we have to add the submit button. So input type is submit 
in our class is submit button and its value is add task that's it we have to only title required now we have to map the url of to do so in url file we have to include path to do page views dot to do and save now we have to create a views function of to do so def to do when request if request dot method equal to equal to post then we have to get the our title so title title equal to request dot post dot get title and now we have to print our title in console so print title and now we have to save title in our models to do so object go to models dot to do object dot filter now we have to save only title so title equal to title and uh, when so in our models uh, to do uh, there are many users uh, have their own to do's so we have to show only to do's which is related to login user so user equal to request dot user that's it now we have to save object dot save in our model and now return our render request to do dot html now we have to check our code is working or not so we have to go into our sign up page now we log in tiger now we check our to do is added or not in our models so we check our to do so you can see that our to do is not added so we check our code so title is spelling is this so title now save now we Add a new task. Hmm. So post method is not capital, so we have to write in capital post now save. And now add our task read books. Add a task. Now we check our to do is created or not as you can see that our task is added read books now we have to print our to do's in this section so we have to get our to do's from models and pass into our objects so now create a race variable and in race variable we have to models dot to do dot objects 
dot filter we have to filter only user with user to do's so we filter this to do's filter user equal to user request dot choose and now we have to show the to do's by date so dot order and we have to redirect into our to do page so return redirect and in this page we have to send our data so res in object in the form of object so res Now copy this line and paste it there. And control S. Now we have to show in our HTML file. So we have to show our data in HTML file. Now we have to show multiple to dos. So we use a loop. So we used for loop for showing multiple to dos. So for to do in res res we already send by views function. Now we have to close our for loop and for. Now in this we have to create one div which is name is div dot to do and in this uh, we have to show our serial number so in the h5 we showing our serial number so to do dot srf serial number and uh, in p tag we have to show our title so to do dot title which is our task and uh, now we have to create edit and delete button so div anchor tag anchor tag now we have to show the user which user is logging so hello with the help of user now that's correct now we use two icons first one is edit and the second is delete delete so we select this icon and now copy and now paste it its link its link is already we inject in our code font like font or something now we have to put one more icon trash now copy and paste it and one more icon is needed log out so log out we use this now copy and paste here now we have to send our objects in our html file so we send our objects res fresh now control s now we check our to do is showing show or not so you can see that our to do is showing 
and we have to add one more task one more task so you can see that our task is added now i have to edit this task so we have to write a function for edit so now we're writing our edit function def edit to do when request pass now we have to write our url of to do edit so path now views dot views dot edit to do how can we know that uh, which to do is edited so we write our serial number with the help of serial number we did this to do so our model will edit this to do and the name equal to edit to do that's it now we have to make a template of edit to do because this is the different part of to do page so we have to create one more template which is name is edit to do edit to do dot html in this we copy the code of to do dot html and now we paste it so we pasted our edited to do code now in this we have to change something now we update update task but less and something more change now we have to transfer the edit to do with the help of this link in this we write our url path edit to do slash so it will automatically come by um, by our serial number so our serial number is to do dot srm control s and now in this we have to update our task so first of all we have to put the value of previous task so we have to fetch the previous task with the help of title so we fetch the title by models so first of all we have to write the function of view function of edit to do so in view function we write thing edit to do so same code of to do it is used in this so copy this code and now clear the pass and paste it now if request dot method equal to equal to post so we get a title from our uh, add task and uh, print the title for in the console and so now we have to update the task so we have to not save in title so we delete this line and get to do dot objects dot get get method is used for update so get and uh, with the help of serial number we find our task so srmo equal to srmo and uh, we passed our serial number when request uh, when the request is held so sr serial number now now we have to update our old task into new task so obj dot title equal to new title 
and now save and this is not needed now redirect to to do page and and this line is also put in this sorry this line now we have to fetch our previous value of the to do so we fetched by we are in value we have to add value equal to and in this so now we passed our title title is obj dot title control s now we check our code is working or not first of all we save our all files now we check our code is working or not so first of all we going to our login page and now we log in and enter in our username is bulla and password and now login now we have to edit this task so we so it is not come there we have to pass obj because we store new title in obj so control s and now we will check now go to our to do page now edit so now edit thing so now we edit our task so our task is come and now we have to edit this task so we have to check this task and one two three tasks update tasks you can see that our task is edited now we have to delete this task so we have to write the view function of delete so now also we write in our view function of delete so first of all we write our url of delete so we include our delete path also so path delete to do slash how can we know that uh, which to do i have to delete from the models so with the help of integer means uh, we have to find our serial number so we find our serial number with the help of this so we passed our serial number in url now views dot delete to do comma and now control set so now we have to put a delete url in our delete button so in to do dot html we have to put a our url so delete to do slash and we passed our serial number so to do dot serial number and save control s now we have to write our view function of delete so we write our view function of delete so def delete to do when request and we and also give serial number so first of all we fetch the serial number which is deleted so we this copy this and paste it now we have to delete the object which is obj dot delete query and now we have to redirect 
to our to do page to our to do page so to do page that's it so now we check our code is working or not so I'm going to and delete this first of all we refresh this page now we delete this task delete so delete to do got an unexpected keyword or sorry so we didn't write serial number full SR SR. now save and check and now refresh so you can see that our task is deleted one more task we delete read books so we deleted this now i want to delete these tasks so delete this so you can see see that our task is deleted so a delete function is also working so now we have to make a sign out button so first of all we have to create sign out button uh, so we create div so div in this div we have to create anchor tag and in this anchor tag so in this div class name is and in this we passed the sign out uh, URL so sign out and we put this icon into anchor tag And class for to sign now save now we have to map this sign out URL into URLs dot by so we have to include path sign out reviews dot sign out and name equal to sign out. Now we have to write a view function of this sign out. So we are writing sign out function dev sign out request and log out request and then we return redirect to our login page now we check our code is working or not So first of all we have to refresh this page. You can see this our username is also showing. Now we log out our page. So you can see that it is working. And one more thing we have to add it in this page. Uh, decorators. So decorator is used for only authenticated user can access the login page so we add the login decorators in views so we import decorators from Django from Django dot country dot auth import decorators 
login decorators and to import login required so we put this login required what to do non non authenticated user cannot access this page and then it login required so login url mm, we have to redirect to login so we have to put this to edit to do also and delete to do also and control s now we test our application so first of all we have to sign up so username is raj raj at the gmail.com and password is and our username is raj and password one so you can see that our we log it with the username of raj now we add a task five minutes for log off we added task now i want to edit this task so no. five plus of water drink so you can see that our task is also edited now i want to delete this task so delete this task so delete it now i want to log out this page so i log out so you can see that we log out so our project is completed now you can find the css in our source code thank you for watching So hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to create a weather application using Django with the help of Open Weather API and City Image API. This application will fetch the weather and other information of City by using API. So let me give you a glimpse of what we are going to create today. So this is basically the default interface of our weather app and let me enter any city. Suppose I enter in the and here you can see that it is displaying the temperature of our city, name of our city and also weather of our city. And it is also displaying the image of our city which is fetched by city image API. So, so let me enter some more city and see whether it is correctly running for them also or not. So I enter Bombay. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It is running correctly. So now let's start creating our project. So first of all, I want you to make sure that you have already installed Python and Django on your system. You can install Python by their website and you can see any tutorial for installing them. And finally, the prerequisite for this video is that you should have some basic knowledge of Python and Django. So let's get started. Now we will first create a folder. and we will give it name weather now open our folder in VS Code now go to terminal then we have to write our first Django command that is Django admin start project our project name that is weather project yeah our project is created now we have to change the directory 
so we have to create another app for our application so that we can perform all the operation in it so we will write command django admin start app app name weather app so this will be our base app which contains all the wish.py and all those file which contains some function now as our project is created go to weather project here go to settings.py and in this folder write our install app name that is weather app yeah so now we will check that our Django run server is running or not so we will write another command python manage dot py run server we will go through this url and yeah it is showing that our django server is running perfectly now we will go back to vs code so so here you can see that there are multiple apps like admins.py apps.py models.py test.py views.py and settings.py but we have our main function in settings.py urls.py and views.py so we will work in this files only uh, so first there is a views.py the views are basically a python function that takes http request and return us a http response like html documents and other uh, we will write all of the function of our application in this to process our application now we have urls.py which will create all the path of our application and how it will render we have to create another urls.py in our weather app so we will create here another file that is urls.py so here we will write all the urls of our base app now from django dot urls import path uh, this key will import all the path of our app and we have to write here urls pattern yeah that's it now again go back to the urls of pi of our weather project so here we will remove this as we didn't need it here we will write so first of all we include the urls of our base app so here we have to include now include weather app urls then we go to views.py so here we come to views.py now as i explained earlier that in this app it takes http request and return http response so first of all we have to include here http response import http response now here we have to write our function that is def home request here return http response hey this is my django server yeah we will write our command python manage.py run server as you can see that whatever server is displaying is whatever text we have entered in our http response hey this is my django server but we doesn't create application by this http response as it will become very difficult for us to manage more http response then i will remove this http response as we didn't need in this our program so remove this now we will add template folder in our weather app so create a folder that is templates uh, 
so basically we will create our HTML template which is easy to implement and which is a standard convention for developing our website or application in a Django. Now we will work on our weather API. So So go to open with the API this website. Uh, open with an API is an online service API that provides global weather data via API, including current weather data, forecast, and historical weather data for any geographical location. Uh, this and this website contains this type of APIs like current weather data, hourly forecast data, daily forecast data, and we will use this, this API in our project. So as you can see there, this API contains some parameters and this parameter are mentioned in this uh, JSON file which will uh, describe us the description of weather, icon of the weather and temperature. So we will use this API for our project uh, that will uh, have city name and API ID. So first of all, you have to create your API that go that go here. You have to create login into your account. Yeah. So you have to copy this API key, and you have to generate your own API key. I am using this API key, and after your use, you can delete this API key for safety purpose. If you need to include all the API in your app, so you can generally go through this single API which will control all these properties. So I will recommend you this API, but in this app we will use this because we doesn't have that much functionality in our application. So now let's get back to the VS Code. So here we first import request and then date time. Here we will write the views.py for our API. So we will write, we'll first enter URL, go to this API and you have to copy this one yeah you have to copy this API and paste in our build.py First of all, you have to insert f string before this API, and now you have to remove now. Get back to the open weather API and copy our API. and paste it here so our API is used and we will write then parameters for this will come this will convert the temperature unit into Celsius and Fahrenheit Our API part is done and now we will write this if else condition if city in request dot then city equals to
now else condition so here you will write our default location that is indoor yes it is just only a variable which we enter in our html document or what we call it is at form uh, and we when we enter then it will request for whether it is in api or not uh, the default uh, value enter in our city variable is indoor so so we will write some more function to get the data first we will write data is equals to get url and parameters dot json so this will fetch all the data from json file and we will write this variables for our api that is description of our weather weather Now we'll copy this and paste here. I can just temperature. Yeah, this all the three functions we will, which we will include in our app. That first is the data description of our weather, and second is the description of our weather icon, and third is temperature of our city. Uh, we will write here zero because uh, all the index of information is zero in our JSON file. So also we have to write day, which will return uh, our date. Which will return as date, date time dot date dot today, and we have to include all this in this return format. So right here, all this variable. and now data yeah we are done so now I will go to HTML page that is we have to first create a form right here method because we have to enter our city post in this form we will first enter csrf token uh, this token is used for our security purpose of our form and now input here so enter here city and in the place of id write here placeholder now search button Now right here search so then enter the variable of what we have written in views.py that are first enter is to here we will write our temperature and 
density. Then description of our weather. Now we have to add our image icon. So we will insert it in image. Now paste this URL in image. Now paste this URL in image to get our image icon. So we have entered our icon. And this is the convention. We have also have to enter here width that is 100 pixel. Now we have also add day here. Now our HTML is completed. So check whether it is running correctly or not so we go here in terminal and and you can see that our html is loaded so here we will first enter our city to get our data so now i will enter city that is in the uh, it is not giving us the name of our city so i think i have made mistake in here is right I think in which dot pi oh I doesn't write city in this render so here we will write city city so now I think it it will return us the city name so again in the yeah it is displaying the name of our city so as you can see that our api is running good so we will now create a new html template for our design now we have to create a new html template for our design we have to design our html template like this so this is basically our default interface and now we will go to vs code to design this template so let's get back to the vs code here yeah. So here in index.html, first remove this form. Now we have to create a new template. So first of all, we create a div container. It will contain all the our interface and now heading of our weather app. Now we have to create another form that is form right here method post and again csrf token for our safety purpose now input type so enter here city and in the place of id right here placeholder city. now create a button for searching the, this button type will be submit now create another div call it weather this will contain our main part so it will divide it into two sections first left and right div dot left here it will contain temperature and city temperature and here is the icon selector so we have to write hash 176 it is symbol for temperature and now we have to enter city Now get out of this uh, div and create another div that is right. This will contain our weather condition div dot right. 
and it will first contain an icon that will contain an image now right here image type and paste our image this will fetch the icon image and write it with that will be under pixel create another div that is condition and it will contain two elements that is first description so we have done with our html template now i will add a static folder to our weather app so static folder will contain all the css file and they will also contain the images of our app so i am gonna create here style.css uh, so i am not going through css because if i if i will explain css then this will video will become so longer so i am gonna simply paste it you can get css from my github id or github project yeah this is our css i will provide the github link in description section so you can get from there now in index.html we have to first link our html we have to first link our css so right here style.css this file this css file will not be loaded because in django we have to write this command for loading our css load static it will load it will load all the static file in our app so i have linked this style.css to our html so in this css we have basically our background image that will load into our interface now we have to go to settings.py and here first we have to import os import os and now we have to include a static file in this settings.py so here we will write static files directory os.path dot john base directory and then our static folder now after this go to yaras.py and here add static so first we have to include two files from django.config import settings now from django dot config URLs import static this will import a static file of our folder and we have to write here settings dot static URL document so by doing this it will create our default interface or of our app so now go to index.html and save this file and then terminal
our static file is not loaded because I think I have made a mistake in index.html that we will use syntax for this for a static file that is static write it as and then our style.css so it was basically a syntax error that I have created because I doesn't load our static our style.css in a static folder so now check hope so so this is completed but I fucked up so I think I have made mistake in this so clear it uh, we have to write static style dot css it is generally a syntax in Django for loading our static file and I also made one more mistake that is I have to place this div at last so here I will paste it yeah so I will gonna save this and now see check it again and yeah here it is running so yeah this is our default interface page that is loaded by the HTML now here we will enter some more city for our API so you can see that it is displaying the temperature of Ujjain and forecast of Ujjain and some more cities like Bombay yeah so we will now have to add two functions that is city image API and if someone suppose if someone has entered wrong city or that city is not available to API or if he have mistyped the city name so let me suppose any city that is not available to API yeah so it will provide the key error so to get uh, resolve this key error we will write a try error, try exception block in our views.py so let's get started so so return to our vs code here we have views.py and now we will use try cache block that is right here try try block so in this block we have to enter just this yes copy and paste we have to solve intendation error of python Yeah, that's it. Now we have to wait except block that will create this function. Now in this exception block, I will write exception occur equals to two and messages error enter data is not available to api now right here day dot date dot today so it is giving us error at message because we doesn't have imported error messages now right here from django dot contribute import 
messages so now our message error is fixed and now we have to return this in our exception block we have to also write a new variable that is if exception occurred write here two so here we will write in description our pre default value that is clear sky and in icons write 0 1 d and temperature write 25 we have make mistake there we have to write in code columns and in day it is right so in city we will write in the yeah that's it then basically what this try and accept block will do is that if someone has entered right name of the city then it will enter all the detail of our city that will description temperature day and city name but if someone has entered wrong test or if city is not available to api then this condition will accession occur then key error will occur so our server will respond this message that enter data is not available to api and we will it will display the default interface that is here it will display the clear sky which is which will be our weather and default temperature that is 25 and our default city that is in the yeah and in try block write false f section word false now get back to index.html and now here we have to write some javascript for our key error that is if exception occurred window dot on load and it goes to function and here we will write our exception of our, our case that is if here we will enter that city information is not available to our API so when someone has entered wrong test or city is not available to the city to the API then this function will called will create an alert message that uh, if uh, then this message then this function will create a pop-up function pop-up message that is city information is not available to api or enter right keyword or enter right city name so here we will end our if loop by end of now we will go to google api to create our api for city image and we will also create a search engine for searches so go to those websites 
So this is the website for generating our API that is custom search JSON API and here we will get our key so here we will get our key and i have already created so i am not going to create again so you have to first get this key and then go to its search engine i will provide you link of both the website then add here and create your own search engine name it as new and image search i am not a robot enter a site or page search the entire web you will choose the setting you will choose this setting search the entire web so that it will fetch all the images related to the city i am not a robot create yeah our search engine is created so you have to copy this and and now go back to our code that is in this we will get back to visit.py here we will enter our api key now create search engine id and paste what we have copied in search engine paste it and now we have to enter some variable like query this will fix our image size it will 920 enter page that will one so now start we will create the logic of how our API will work and you will get it by our source code search type if anyone search for images now we have to paste our city URL that will be generated as in city url here we will paste our api yeah that's it so this api will contain our api key our search engine id our query logic and start and search type and what is what will be the size of our image that will be x large so enter some more data that data is equals to it will make request from city url to read json file and provide us information here count is equals to one now in search item So this search item will contain the data of our JSON file data variable that we have defined that which will read JSON file and provide us the information data dot get items image URL. search items here our our index will be one and it will search through link so we will write here link yeah that's it our all the variables is created which is needed and now we will add this image url in our try block yeah here here we will add image 
URL image URL so basically our views is completed now I will want to explain it that whatever data we have entered whatever city we have entered will be fetched and it will display the image of the city through our API key or search engine and it will also resolve the image size and all these are the basic functions which we have written to get our data so basically our image API work is completed now we will go to index.html and here we will write another condition here so in the case of if there is a key error we have to return some image so i will gonna write logic of it that is if exception occur then now it will resolve the background image function that is go to style.css and in body tag copy this background image and go to index.html here paste our background image style is equals to now in else case if there is no exception occur it will display us our city image for that style will be background image URL and now we have to return our image URL so we will write here image URL yeah so we have done and here we will end our loop and if so we have done with our function so go to our terminal and check that is it is running correctly or not python my run server now enter so we will go through this here. now search for city that is I will search for New York yeah it is entering the image of our city and our temperature is also so we will enter some more city and see whether it is running or not so we will enter Agra yeah so that's it for today we have completed our project so you can find uh, all this CSS and all the source code in our GitHub link. So keep learning and and I and I have also provided the API links of all those applications and you can check it in description box. So thank you for giving your precious time and thank you for watching. That's it. Hello everybody, welcome back to Euro by Night. I am Avnish. Today we are going to make music player in Django with lyrics. Here is the glimpse what we are going to make today. Asulo par jaha chai, takrana zaruri hai. Andazin.
okay as you can see our song has been synced with our lyrics so how we are going to do that let's just start it okay for the file structure we are going to use the vs code so i'm assuming that you already have the python installed in your system so after that we are going to use our vs code open any folder where you wanted to save the project so i'm opening the project file uh, here we first of all we are going to install the django so if you write pip install django pip is the python package manager uh, if you write the pip install django it will install the latest version of the django i already have so it will say that requirement is already satisfied okay as you can see our requirement is already satisfied and the version of the django is 4.7.1 for creating the project directories we are going to write django python admin start project and let's just give the name of the project as music player over here you can see that our file structure has been created where all the necessary files has been created by the Django. We are going to create the app. So for that we are going to write Django hyphen admin. And let's just see the start app and let's just give the name of the app as app. Okay. Over here you can see that our app has been created. Okay. Now we are going to create the folders in our app like templates uh, in templates as must be given and we are going to create uh, another folder with the name of static and another file with the name of urls dot py as the urls dot py has been given here we are going to create the urls so as we are going having the uh, index.html and another file with the name of men.html I'm creating a basic structure file structure where we are going to work in static we are going to have the script.js and another file uh, which is CSS, so we are going to give the name with style.css. Okay, now let's uh, run this server and see if it is running or not. Okay, the server has been run successfully, and here you can see the landing page of the Django. Okay, so this landing page has been coming from our project section in the URL where the path of this site has been written now we have to write our url in our app and we are going to include them in our uh, project url sections so first of all we are going to include that so we are going to write uh, another path for our project url so just write path and here we are going to use the include here we are adding the URLs of our app URL. So okay, so we have to include the include function here. Okay, as we created the static and template file, so we have to tell our settings that we are going to use them. So first of all, we are going to install our app so we created our app with the name of app a capital so we have installed our app here after that we are going to tell our project that we are using the files such as statics and templates so template sections already present in our uh, settings so we don't have to write uh, another uh, name with the name of templates so here it here you can see that the s has been added that's why we are at the s over here now we are going to use the aesthetics and media so let's just first create the media folder over here for our 
music and lyrics and poster of the music okay we have created the folder with the media so whatever music file and the poster file we are going to save in our database which is xqlite 3 will be stored over here so let's just configure that also in our uls.py of our project folder directly so we are using the url patterns of statics file so we have to include the url patterns also so for that we are going to Im import the url patterns the statics files from the django country we are in, so we are importing the url patterns so here we are going to write the statics static url patterns okay and we are doing the same things for our media so again we are going to write the url patterns and the settings okay so we have to import the settings also so for that again we are going to write from Django config. We are importing the settings now, and for the statics only, we have to import it again from the Django dot country and dot static files dot URLs, and we are importing the statics. Mm. Okay, so we have to tell the settings that we are having the uh, static and the media folder in our project so for that we are going to write the lines in our statics urls and name of our file which is statics and small so name of our file is folder is static we have to provide the root also so static root and we are using the os part over here we have to do the same things for our media folder also so for our media folder we are going to write the media url same as we write and for the static sorry here we have to write the media and we have to give the root also so same as we given the root for our static folder we are going to root for our media also okay we have forget to give the comma over here and just write the name of our folder which is media as we using the os so we have to import the our operating systems uh, the operating system directly over here okay that's it our uh, file structure so we have done the file structure now we don't have to create any file in our project so now we are going to return the models where okay so uh, django provide the inbuilt database which is sqlite 3 here we can see in our settings also so in media now music player setting.py here we can see that it provide the database sqlite 3 so we are using the inbuilt sqlite 3 if you want to change that you can change the engine and use an, any other database so for that we are going to use the Django models in our app and we are going to create a class with the name of song and let's just import the models.models 
okay so let's just say what we are required title and the name of artist and the image and the audio file and the audio link if it is not available in the file it says link and the lyrics of the music and the duration like how, how much long the model is now let's just give the data types for this so it should be in the text field and it is also in the text field so they will there is no limit in the artist uh, one song could be made by the 30 people so we are not giving any corrective field because corrective field required eliminations so we are using text field okay so for image we are going to install the pillow to save the image in python Django. we have to install the pillow so after that we are going to install the pillow also so here yeah, currently we are going and the audio file will be in the file so for that we have to have the uh, data types with the name of file okay and for the link we are going to use the character file which could be about 200 max length 200 a uh, link could be in the 200 uh, it could be a blank uh, if someone doesn't want to provide the link it should work so here we are using the true if it is blank it it must be true and if it is null then also true okay so Let's just say models dot text field because the length of the looks could be anything. So just say it could be also blank if because many of these songs doesn't have the lyrics. It should it could be a musical instruments music. So let's just say it's true. This null and blank which gonna be accept in our database let's just say the duration of the song as a corrective field because we don't want to um more than 20 minutes song let's say 20 so let's just define the max length as to max length equals to 20 okay after that we are going to use the constructor and return itself return the class okay hmm. we are written the title okay so as we created the uh, class about this song so we have to tell the admin that we are going to use this kind of models in our app now let's just tell our admin that we are going to use it so for that we have to register admin that we are using this site the name of this uh, our class or site so we have the given the name yes song and let's just import our song so from models we are importing the songs 
okay as we are using the images and trying to save the image in our database so for that we have to install the below library of the python so just write the pip installed below okay so i already have the below my system so you don't write the install below and if you already have it will say that requirement already satisfied now let's write the views of our of our app so for here we are going to use the function tab index which is give the name of our function and it is requesting whatever we are going to write in here so let's just say that we have a page for each song so for that we are using the paginator so let's just create a variable with the name of paginator paginator will be used by the song class which we made in our model sections as an object and so we are going to use it as an object let's just say the first is a first now we are going to give the number also so page number equals to request get get in the capital and then get small and we are getting the page okay now we are using the page as our object so let's just create another variable with page object and using the paginator we are getting the page numbers Okay, let's create the page object row here for using in our streaming. So, object as our page object. So, what we are going to use is lines in our curly braces in HTML and it will indicate our page object as we get as a page editor. Page object. Okay. And we are going to return render our HTML file, which we are going to return after this. So let's just say we are requesting uh, HTML file with the name of index dot HTML and having the context of the page object. Okay. so we are using the song of our models so here also we have to import the songs from the models so, so we are importing everything in the models and especially song class as we are importing using the paginator we can import the paginator also from the Django or paginator which is library given by the uh, Django okay as we return our use function with the name of index so we are going to write in our urls of the app so first of all we are going to use the url pattern patterns and here we are going to add the path whatever we have created in our views so let's just say that we have created the views dot index with the name of function and let's just give the name to it this index okay 
now we have to import a lot of files for our url patterns so let's just first from django we are importing our settings country we are in config we are importing our settings the date we are importing our url statics so from Django.config.url static. We are importing the static. Okay. We include the functions. So here we are using the views. So first we have to import our views also. So from everything we are importing views and for the path we have to import the path also from our django urls so here yeah, let's just import the path okay now when we are going to use the run server we are not going to see the landing page of django let's just define our page generator also let uh, we have using the page generator over there so let define it here also let, we are using the generator by let's just say how uh, we having two pages and now we have done with the backend part now we have to deal with the statements and template parts so let us go in our index and just get the normal templates and it just give the name of our player as a music player okay we are going to use a lot of links which are pre-built such as bootstrap so let's just get the bootstrap link and we are using the ajax link of cloud player where already the lines and the bar music bar has been created so we are going to use them so let's just make them also over here a link to get our static files of cases so just write the uh you with the static static uh, the name of our file which is style.css okay so the main part of our html will be in our html so we are going to include with the html template text so which is include tag we are including our main.html which we are going to write okay um, we are also we have also the script.js so we have to add those also so let's just write script and the yes, uh, we are going to uh, add the link for the style sheet so we are going to use the cloud link also let's just write over here and one more script for the another cloud shell and our main script.js file so let's just give the source which is static and we are saving those file as a script.js okay. okay so we have done with the basic structure now we are going to add all these links okay so all these necessary links will be provided in the descriptions and i will also upload in the github also so you can check it out from the github repo i'm just going to copy all these necessary links and paste over here the link this is the bootstrap and this is the font family which we are going to use for our lyrics so it is google font family so it is not that much talk you can get easily 
we'll just add also this under family no support so let's we'll just add this also okay so that's it about the scripts and anything so now we are going to write the main section over here let's just turn the html and we are using the head tag uh, title title tag and just give the now let's just give the body tag and then here we are going to write all the necessary things so first of all we are going to create the link for our music video I'll just give the name class music player okay now every object we have created over here will be represented in our main.html so for that we are using the for loops of uh, pythons in Django which is for items in page object which we have created in our views earlier so they will be represent over here let's just say class another div in our music layer and just say that here we are going to use the image and the image will be came from our database so we have to represent it as item dot image dot url we have to conclude the image tag now we have the another div just give the as driver so here we have to use the artist name and the title of the song let's just use the artist name as the artist name also came in from our database where we have given the name of artist as an artist and the title of this song also coming from the database which we are going to include so let's just say the title item dot title okay now in the center now if we see what we have created let's run the server okay so first we have to make migrations with whatever we have done in our Django project so let's just make migrations okay so in the URL we have to provide that we are using the app which is app name and app just okay here we have write the capital we have to make them as a small because our name of our app is a capital and p r small now let's just see okay the migration has been done the another command is python manage dot py migrate okay all the migration has been done now let's done. okay our server has been run html file so let's just add all the html tags first okay so the main section which we are going to use as an object so let's just say in center we are using uh, an anchor tag where our page is getting load so let's just say if page object has previous then when we use this as a URL question mark page and the page will be page dot object dot previous and we will display the page number 
and after that we are going to and if it is not there so we are going to write and if okay now we'll just break it down okay so we are using the iframe for that so let's just use the iframe and giving the class and using the bootstrap so let's just provide the bootstrap of straight back straight back word and give the flex as 2x so the first encoding for the previous has been uh, added now for the forward we are going to use another uh encoding so let's just write encoding here we are going to use if someone has click on the forward means if he or she wants to be in the uh, change the songs so the page will be load as object dot has next next if the page is available okay, so we have provided the wrong curly braces okay the same as above we will provide the page and after that we'll use to give out the another object with the name of next page page number and again we are going to end this okay so i end up with the two curly braces but it doesn't require any two so we will put it in, uh, okay so here also we are going to use the iframe okay so as we created the backward uh logo for our back so we are going to use the step forward for our forward look okay so the same size as we have created here as a backward we are going to use here as a forward arrow that's it here we are going to use the mtd takes okay now we are going to create another div for media sources such as audio link what is in you know, audio we are using the audio let's just take the audio tag and source will, will, will be written afterwards just say media and let's give them a little bit of style like this with and the first two hundred percent now with the name of ID. okay now provide these tools which we are using here let's then provide a source so we are taking the file from our databases so if item with audio file so the name should be same which we have written in our databases is available then we will put the audio and if it does not then we have we will write another condition so first if it is available put put is link also so audio file url if it is not available then we will use else we are going to use the else okay so if there is audio file available in our database for that page then it will show the audio file and when we click on the play it will play but if it if doesn't present we will provide the audio item module link which we already written in our modules so here as we return the audio file audio links so all those words we have written in our database we are using here also and let's just end here to end the if loop let's just give the type of our which is 
so all the web file will be going to be in mp3 format so let's just give it the mp3 yes we have to write the semicolon here and then it will come the semicolon okay so the full loop which we have started over here as a page we are going to end here so just write and for and we will use this percentage over here okay i have made a little bit mistake over here and use the paginator p has been a capital after that uh, in index.html here the statics we have to give a little bit of space okay now let's just check the server okay so this error because we don't have the load statics so we have to load the statics here so we are going to use this template text for the load static and now if we reload this this will match the problem and a little bit mistake over here and we have to put this and now let's run again a little bit mistake over here we have to put the percentage modeling over and here we have to give the space in the if section also we have to give the x space here also okay i am adding the css for our HTMLs. i'm not writing the css uh, and showing in the video because it will take uh, much more longer time and the length of the video will be increased so I will provide these cases uh, in the GitHub repo and as well as uh, you can check out the link in the description for that. Now let's just create a super user to login. So for that we have to write within dot let's make a oh, create super user. super user okay so here you have to write the name let just write our name just give the password and again type the password it is short but we are not concerned about the security right now and let's run the server again okay, now go here and type admin and you will have the admin login sections and write your know, username and the over here you can see the song you can add the song by clicking on the add let's just we okay the song has been added now see here we can see all this but the it is not aligned well okay guys please recheck this center and they written properly because all the functionalities which we are going to use are written over here so please recheck this and let's run the server okay as you can see that our uh, template section has been come but this will not work so for that we have to write the javascript so in javascript i already have written this code and uh, you can copy from here and let me explain you what this code actually doing so here we create an object with method property related to handling audio elements such as web page web page now break down the 
this whole code step by step where audio this is the uh, variable with the name of audio this line pro, uh, defines an object name audio and uh, contains several properties and method okay so this um, contain all the properties from use to use in it function this uh, function this method name in it defines inside the audio object it is used to initiate the audio player here what it does it set the variable that and uh, that uh, and to reference the audio object it is use the jQuery functions function to wait for the document to get ready before execute and content code this inside the function it calls another function called component okay so inside this function we are calling another function component components this is uh, an object containing various component related to the audio functionalities to the audio functionalities in context there are only one component media which is defined as a method okay so here in this functions so in audio function we are going to write another function component and in here we are using uh, as a method media function target target this lines uh, this method is the media method inside the component object it initialize audio element on the page here what it does it selects audio element with the class fc media using jquery it check for a target parameter and if provide it look for audio element within the target element otherwise it search for audio element within the whole body of the html document if any audio element were found uh, we have written the if and else condition over it. so if any audio element are found it applies the media element player plugin to them the plugin customize appearance and the behavior of html5 audio player the feature options configure which control buttons are displayed in the player for example play pause current durations volume progress track and many more other options such as always show controls we have written it so uh, whenever someone logins it will show the controls uh, time and duration separations uh, using use navigate control settings configure and behavior and appearance for the of the player finally the code concludes with the following lines so audio in it this line calls the init method of the audio object effectively initializing the audio player on the web page in summary this code initialize a audio player for audio element with the class fc media enhancing their controls and opinions with media element player plugin that in it initiate method is used to start this initialization process when the document is ready now let's run the server again after the javascript code okay so we can play the music but we are not seeing the lyrics we are going to now at the lyrics function here you can see that our pages in pinching so if i put it over here a one so it will jump back to the one uh, first page okay so this is all about our music player now for the lyrics we are going to use this uh, remaining sections and we are going to write the html and js for that also and the uh, styling css will be available in the uh, github repo i'm not going to show you the styling uh, feature so how we are going to write the lyrics so first of all we have to uh, write the lyrics in the time section means we need a time lapse and uh, lyrics of any music so we are using this github repo uh, sync the lyrics here we are going to first install this so here we are going to install uh, sync lyrics with the help of okay sorry okay so we have installed the sync lyrics now we are going to you create a file over here let's just say test.dy here we are going to write the 
code so the code is of the same color as this you can check in the descriptions and this code has been using from that repo now what we do what we have to do is we have to run this code and uh, write the track name or the artist name and it will give us a uh, dates with the time span but now first uh, add the functionalities to our app for the viruses so in main.html let's just first create the right sections okay so we have to write the right section before the uh, our end for loop so we are going to give the div for the name of let's just say class uh, right section and over here we are going to give another div with the name of class this container let's just say container and in this container we are providing the lyrics so let's just say div and give them as a class lyrics and after that we are going to using a p deck to store all the so let's just give this p deck another id of song lyrics and provide a class uh, let's just say song lyrics again and provide the data so we are fetching the lyrics from the our databases so for that we are going to write the simple code which is data lyrics and item dot data so let's just say data data slash lyrics let's just say equals to uh, item lyrics that's it we have to do only this for you okay now let's just check uh, okay now let's just check our uh, dev tag that this is working uh, right or not so okay here we can see that uh, another div uh, has been came uh, now we are going to use the javascript for the uh, lyrics so i'm just copy this javascript code and put it over in the index.html uh, Okay, so I will put it the JavaScript code in index.html. Okay, now I will explain each and every line of the JavaScript. You can uh, pause the video and write the JavaScript code from here, or you can check the descriptions. So this JavaScript code works with the HTML document that include audio element and the container for the lyrics it means to synchronize the display lyrics with the audio as it plays let's break down the code step by step document dot event listener down control load it this code wraps everything inside an event listener then wait for the html document to fully load it that is when the document loaded that this ensure that the javascript code execute after the html HTML are available for manipulations. Now the constant audio functions uh, or uh, you can say the variable document.getElement epsimedia this line fetch an audio element with the ID of epsimedia which we have written in our HTML from the HTML document you should replace this with the actual ID of your audio element constant lyrics container so we are we uh, currently html we have given the uh, lyrics so for that we are writing here so let's just say that um, this is meant to display the lyrics of the song it assumes that the element will 
have the data lyrics attribute content a json string with the string lyrics data so after that let current lyrics index equals to this will variable track of the current lyrics index being displayed it will start at zero which corresponding to the first lyrics constant lyrics data this is the json parse document this line extract the lyrics data as a json string from the data lyrics attribute of the the song lyrics element and the phrases it into the javascript object this data is accepted to be an array of an object with time and lyrics properties now we have the audio dot event listener uh, this code set up the event listener the target on the time update event of the audio element the time update event occurs as the audio is played and provide to the current time uh, playback time with time update event the listener the code does the following constant current time equals to audio current time so while loop iterate through your lyrics data array checking if the current time is greater than or equal to the time of the next lyrics if true it increment the current lyrics index to move to the next lyrics this loop ensure that this lyrics change as the audio process progresses the lyrics container inner uh, text so we are providing the lyrics over here html id lyrics container and we are writing the inner inner lyrics in it inner text uh, it update the content of the lyric container element with the lyrics corresponding to the current time determined by the current lyrics indexed uh, function the time to second this is the utility function that convert a time in format minute second to second it is used to compare the current feedback playback time with the time associated with the each lyrics in the data lyrics in summary this code synchronize the dis synchronize the display of the song lyrics with the with an audio element by listening for the time update event and update the dis display lyrics based on the current playback time the lyrics data is accepted to be provided as json string in the data string attribute to stay of this song element now let's just try out that how we are going to save this lyrics let's just first make this uh, blink true okay now let's just test our sync lyrics so we are going to run this uh, py uh, file so let's just run this python uh, text.py and run this file it will ask uh, to enter the name of this song so let's just say the name of this song is stay uh, stay with um, Okay, so it will provide whole lyrics in the format of JSON. So we, we need to just copy it from here and uh, okay, so let's just copy and the server has already has been run. So we have to go here and I'm adding uh, another song over here uh, in the admin section of stick. So let's go and choose the audio file. Okay, so this is the audio file. Okay, so let's just choose our image. Okay. And let's just give the name of the song, say, and the artist, Justin, and we don't have the audio link but let's just provide the okay so we'll get this song lyrics copy it I'll put it over here the duration of the video uh the audio is to 14 so let's just say 15 seconds to make 15 seconds and add this file now when we go to our uh, third page we will see the 
song with the name of stay and when we play it okay so just refresh it and when we play this So the more functionalities like adding the song from here and publishing this music player on the Heriku uh, will be in the further videos. Thank you for watching everybody. Hey there, welcome back to our channel. So today we are going to build a Django based web application named as Blog Bridges where people can post their blog and see other people's blog. This also authenticate the user login and user sign up system. So let's first see how it is going to look like. So this is going to be login page for our website where people can log in with their account. Uh, if the user does not have any account, they can create one. So let's create. Let's name is as punam punam at that mail dot com and passwords let's sign up so our account is created let's log into this account so we are logged into our account and this is the home page of our website where different blog posts are already already there so if the user want to see their previous blogs they can see in my post section but this user does not have any previous blog so it is empty let's create new post name title Poonam's first post and content post so it is reflected in our home page now if we see my post section it is also visible there if we want to go to home then we just click our logo blog bridges and it is reflected it is redirected to our home page. Let's sign out to this account and start building this project. Let's start building our projects. So open terminal. For creating a new project in Django, we have to write a command. Django admin start project and then project name. So I'm going to give it a Django block so our project is created let's change directly to django block and open it with code editor so our code editor is opened with this folder which contains our django project named as django block so first of all we will create a new app so for creating a new app we have to write uh, Django command named as Django admin start app named as blog. So as you can see, our blog app is created, and this is our main project Django blog. So we have to we will use this blog app with our main project. So for using this, we have to tell our main project that we will use it. So for that we have to write something in our settings.py file in the installed app section. For that first of all go to apps.py in our blog app and copy this blog config and then go to settings.py in single quotes write blog which is the name of our app dot apps this is the file name and then paste what we have copied blog config so this line is going to tell our blog django blog project that we will use the blog app so let's create a new file in this blog section named as urls.py so our urls.py files maps the path from incoming request 
to a specific view of our Django application. So this is our main Django blog project. This also contain urls.py file. In this, the default path is slash admin. So first of all, let's check our project is running or not. So go to terminal. So let's run our app by typing python manage.py run server. I am using python 3 but you can also use python only. So these have some system check errors. We will deal with it later but as you can see our development server is started at this URL. So go to this URL. This says the install works successfully. Congratulations. That means our Django project is successfully installed. So let's create our first view. So go to views.py. So views.py is a file which handles the logic of our web application which takes a simple request and pro process it and gives the appropriate response. So let's create our first view. So we can create view in the form of function as well as classes. So we are going to use function in this tutorial. So let's create a function name test which takes an argument named as request. return so return a http response so for returning it we have to first import it so from django.http import http response so just simply return http response with a string hello world. So we have write our test function which is returns an HTTP response with a string hello world. So for rendering it, we have to write its URL in urls.py. So this is empty. So we can copy this from our main project's URL and for an empty part just take views dot test function so this is not recognizing that what is view so we have to import it from dot import views from dot import views dot means from current directory. So urls.py and views.py both are in same directory. So we write it is at dot. So from dot import views and if the path is empty, just to show the test function from views. So for using this URL and this view function, we have to include one, we have to include our blog app in our project Django blocks URL. So import one more thing include from Django.urls and give a path for an empty string include blog.urls. So let's run our development server and go to the link. It is showing hello world that means our url is working so this is how we write our functions in views.py which handles the logic of our, of our web application and urls.py which maps the incoming request to a specific view so let's create our templates folder so what is templates? Templates is a flow folder which controls the HTML or which stores the HTML 
of our application so in this template folder let's make a new folder named as blog and in this blog let's make a file base.html so in this tutorial i am going to use bootstrap so let's start writing our base html first of all let's link the bootstrap with our template so go to bootstrap copy this css and paste it copy this js and post at the bottom of the body and for testing it let's make an dot container div h1 test so this is our block file let's render it through this test view so for rendering it we have to use the render function which is already imported so remove it and render render text to arguments first is request and second is block slash stm base .html. so render text to arguments first is request and second is the if and second is going to be a string which contains the path of our html file so let's go to our server and refresh it then you can see this works let's create our base template let's start writing our template base first of all change title blog blog bridges and this time i am going to use custom container here i will use block content load static and i will give some style let's refresh this is send text block and block we should not give this box so this is working this is going to be our base html which contains our bootstrap requirements now let's create our login page we are going to inherit this base app in login.html so just write extends block slash base.html and block content And block so here we will write our login.html or login page html so i i have already written it so i am going to simply use it so we have pasted our login page html so let's complete it by first loading static so load static and in the form just include csrf token 
and method equal to post give name to the input equal to you name and password to you password and for this image source just use static in single quotes the path of the image which is image slash logo dot png now let's run our server by opening terminal python 3 minus dot file run server so it's given an error could not test the reminder so just close it and then replace so it is, it is showing our login page now let's create our sign up page so make a new file sign up dot html and for this i am again using a snippet you will get this all snippet in description but first of all load this all now make url for sign up path sign up views dot sign up now let's create sign up function in views dev sign up request return render request and then block slash sign up dot html now let's go to our server and type sign up and it is showing that it does not we have to include a forward slash and this way then it is showing create an account that means this is our sign up page and it is ready now we have to to edit this first of all the method equal to post and here include csrf token and give name to everything you name you email you password here if you have already an account then you can directly go to login page and in login section if you do not have any account then you can go to sign up page let's check it if you have already account go to login this that does not matter so we have to include forward slash replace we have to make default url as sign up and comment it because it is not essential for us now for login this is default so just forward slash and sign up just go to login so go to sign up which is now empty path if we login 
then we redirect it to login page. If we not register create in the account, we redirect it to sign up page. Now let's create our home template. But but before this, we have to add some more things in this sign up dot html. Give it a style same as the login background color as f0 f8 f8 now let's replace it then color is changed now let's create our home dot html This also extends the base yeah, base HTML. Now we have to make a new bar here, so I will again copy it from these snippets. You guys can also copy it from snippets and follow along with the video. Let's make a container, bootstrap container. We will use this as again custom container. Now, just we have to pass. DHRF2 slash home and source for this is again static. Image slash o dot png. And for drop down section, we have to give the href which we didn't make right now, but we will make in future. Then just give this URL pattern slash new new post slash my post slash sign up. So this is going to be our navbar. So just give it URL path home slash views dot home. So we have to write the home function in views dot file dev home request. Return render request and then its HTML path block search on dot HTML. Now let's check slash home, it is shown, but it is not showing our image our logo so what happened to it now let's create the post section paste it here this is going to this is going to show the post in home page but for now we didn't create any post so it is not going to show for that let's now create our models so go to models create class post models dot model now we have to create 
four fields. First one is title, which is not, which is normally character field. So models dot care field has a max length of hundred words. Second one is content, which is a text field because it is it. Second one is content and it is a text field because we don't know how much its length would be. So we will give it text field. Now third one is date posted. And we will use the date time field for this. And it's default equal to time zone dot now. So we have to import time zone. So from Django dot utils import time zone. So now we can use time zone. And the last one is author of this post. models dot the so author is going to be a foreign key so user on delete models dot cancel so we have to import user also so from django dot country dot auth dot models import user so this is our class so the one more thing we have to do here is just define our str function gender gender str sorry and we just simply return self dot type that's it about models so we have to register this model in our admin page so admin dot type dot register post so for using post we have to first import it so from dot models import post that's it now we have to run some commands which are Python 3 minus dot pi make make migrations and then Python 3 minus dot pi migrate. Now let's create our super user. I will leave blank to use my name as Bulla. And password. So now let's our develop. Now, now let's run our server. Go to here. This is showing. We have to configure it, but just go to admin and login with our username which is Gorilla and password so here you can see ports is created and user is Gorilla so why So we have made our model for post. Now let's create some post manually. So this post content title, let's give it first post content. Let's copy it from somewhere.
डेट टू डे टाइम नंबर एंड यूजर इज ऑथर इज बोला से Now let's make changes in home, which will reflect the post in this home section. So go to home dot html. In this article section, the h1 tag will going to show the author's name. So just For using this, we have to pass the context mm -hmm. from the view function. For using the author, so just go to views dot by for home and make a context here. Just make post. Post dot objects dot or for using post we have to include the from dot models import post. So now we can use it and we can pass through third parameter context. Now just go to our Home dot statement. So for manually, now we will use a for loop for displaying the post. So just write the for loop. So we will use a for loop for displaying the post. So just write a for loop before the article section. For post in ports, and we have to end this for loop after the, after the article. And now we can use. First of all, we have to print the author's name. So in H one. Post dot author. In second section, here we will display the date. So for date, just post dot date underscore post date, and we will format it with date colon f d Right. This is the standard approach by Django. You can search on Google how it works. Now, for the title, we use post dot title and content post dot content. If we go to home page, then it is showing. Now we should give some space between the navbar and the post. Just give two br tags and refresh. It is good, but we should give one more. That's okay. So this is our home page, and this is the view function of our home page. So now, first, let's complete our login and sign up view function. So for sign up, if request dot method equal to equal to post. Then name equal to request dot post dot get you name 
this name is already taken in the signup.html section this name equal to uname so we are going to use this so uname equal to this email equal to request dot post dot get you email password equal to request dot post dot get you you password and now we have to make a new user and save it to database so let's make new user equal to user dot objects dot create user here we have to import the user for using it so from django dot country dot auth dot models import user so now we can use user and here just pass the username equal to your name name only for email pass email and for password just pass the password and now new user dot save and then simply return redirect to slash login page we have to import redirect so after render we can redirect import here our signup function is completed let's write the logic for login function so here if request dot method equal to equal to post then simply name equal to request dot post dot get you name and password equal to request dot post dot get you password and we have to authenticate now we have to authenticate this with our users username and password so for this we have to first include authentic authenticate so from django dot country dot auth import authenticate login and logout we will use login and logout later now in login section just just write a new user equal to authenticate request username equal to name and password equal to password now if user is not none then we will simply log in to request user and return redirect to slash home with this particular user if it is not if it is none then in else we will return redirect to again login page so we have done with our login and sign up view now let's check 
एक सो गो टू ब्लैंक सेक्शन विच इज दिसन अप लेट्स क्रिएट एन अकाउंट फॉर टेस्ट टेस्ट एट द रेट मेल डॉट कॉम एंड पासवर्ड साइन अप सो आवर यूजर इज क्रिएटेड लेट्स लॉग इन टू दिस टेस्ट एंड पासवर्ड एंड voila that's working now let's write our new posts and my post section so first of all let's write its template so make new file for new post dot html here we will use the same navbar as home section so we will copy the navbar with this thing also and for my post we will again create new html file and paste it here also let's first write the view function for new post and my post so let's start with new post so dev new post new request so here we will require two things the first one is title and second one is content so let's pass it for now and dev my post request pass now let's write its templates first so for new post so let's use our snippet for new post so here we have pasted our new post snippet now we have to change something some things in this first of all the method equal to post and include the csrf token now for this input we have to give name equal to u title only title not u title and for text area we have to give name equal to content that's it for this and all the things other are also same so now let's go to my post section here we will use the home dot html section this one article section with the loop just copy with the div and my post section just paste it because this both are same but the single difference is the home page is going to render and going to show all the post but my post section will only show the users particular post so we will write this logic in use to file so let's write for new post section so for creating new post first thing we will check that if request dot method request dot method equal to equal to post if it is then title equal to request dot post dot get title and for content just request dot post dot get 
content. We have to write a equal sign. No. For saving it in database, just create a new post equal to models dot our own model post here. We have to include we this, but we already included. Let's write title equal to title, content equal to content, author equal to request dot user. So what's happening here? Model is not different. So we have to include import the model from dot import models. Now this is running. So for this now we have to save this and post dot save and then return redirect to home page. And else just return render request and then it's templates templates location which is blog slash new post dot give some space then now it is completed. Now let's write for my post. So for my post, just make a context. Post. Post equal to post dot objects dot filter we have to filter for only particular user which can be done by author equal to request dot user so now just return render with first request and then the location of its HTML, which is blog slash my post dot HTML, and then pass the context. Now let's make its URLs. So path path equal to slash my post, which is views dot my post just write a comma after everything and then for, for path new post for it slash views dot new post one thing one more thing we will build that is sign out so let's give a path path sign out views dot sign out so we will create this one let's first create after we will write logic now let's check this running or not? Right comma, then it is good to go. So let's check. Go to development server 
and then my post new post this is giving new post but my post is not running let's check why my post so we have to write a for loop in that it is already here first we will write this logic then after we will do just simply log out the request and return to redirect for login that's it for this sound sign out function so let's check our this does not have any work let's close these ones new post my post base sign up login models admin dot pi auto home dot is let's see is home working or not home is working my post is not reflecting my posts maybe this does not have any post new post new post is working but it is showing crf let's fix it so here we have to include one more person sign then it is good to go the new post section is working but my post is not working let's see why it is not working so in my post dot html we have extended custom container everything let's format every this is the navbar section let's go to this section just give head one heading one my post and for this everything is good let's make a new post and then check it go to admin bulla the post first post is posted by bulla saved now let's go to my post so it is reflecting so my post is working new post is working and our home is working sign up is working let's create a new user name this priti priti now let's log in so login and sign up is also working and now if we go to my post section of Preeti's profile then it is blank now let's create a new post Preeti's first post and again copy this and paste post it is showing now if we sign out it is also working now let's again login everything is fine just the logo of our blog app is not working let's fix it so here we have to go to our home.html file and here it is 
So what's the problem behind this? We have to make four of png. If we press, it is there. We have to correct it in my post and in your post also. Now let's text our application from scratch. So this is sign up page. Let's create a new profile named as what we should give the name. Let's let's test our application from scratch. So this is our sign up page. Let's make a user named as kk kk and that mail dot com password and sign. So our user is created. Let's log in kk password and login. Login. It is not login. So we are maybe we are typing in wrong password. So let's test our application by creating a new user. So let's name is aj aj at the mail dot com and password and then sign up. Let's log in via AJ, AJ and login. So this is our home page. Now login and sign up is work correctly, perfectly. This is our home page. Go to my post. This is blank because AJ does not have any post. Let's make a new post by AJ. So AJ's first post and paste this section and post it. So it is there. That means new post is also working. Now go to my post. So my post is also showing this post. Now go to home. It is also working. So now sign up. So that's it for this tutorial. In this tutorial, you have learned how to make a blog application using Python Django framework. So if you like this video, so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and do comment how was the video. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello everybody and welcome to EBM. Today we are building an expense tracker system. Now this is not very complex topic to explore so I urge you to pause the video and think for a few seconds what all features do you think a system like this should have. You can add all those features uh, by forking my github repository. Now let's dig in. So firstly we have our register and login system. Uh, I'm not going to register as a new user because I already have an account. So firstly we are going to register or login. I'm not going to register because I already have an account. So we are going to Sign in with my default ID Azure and our password. And voila, this is our home page. We have on our left here a monthly expense bar chart, which is showing expenses for every month. On our right here, we have those expenses as a list with from date and to date, etc. And below here we have a little form. This form is gonna it also has a little checkbox to check if we are going to add a long-term liability or a short-term daily expense. Let's try adding a long-term liability. Let's say I bought a phone uh, for some amount, I don't know, $500 and on an EMI for an year. 2024. The interest rate should be around 7% and see we have added that phone loan for an year and our bar chart has included that expense and in this list we have our phone loan displayed with $43 per month EMI. It works great. So let's get into the implementation nitty gritty. Okay first of all you have to make a virtual environment which I have already created here. When I have named it when when I'll list all the libraries we are going to need in the, in my GitHub repository and the YouTube description below. I've already activated my virtual environment. You can activate that by the command source 
going to the directory, bin directory, and then activate fish. Let's start our Django admin project. Django admin start project temp tracker. We'll go to our temp tracker project and start an app called I don't know, I'm not creative with names, X tracker. You can name it anything, you can name it much more creatively, but I am not gonna do so. Okay, so first of all, we have to change our settings, project settings.py to include the installed app, which is X tracker. We are also edit. We are also gonna edit our static directory here. We are gonna add a slash here, and after this, we also have to add this static files directories equal to os dot path dot join static. So basically this little line here is gonna join our base directory and static directory together and store it in the static files directory so that a Django application know where to look for to search static directory and the static URL is gonna store all our static things like our style sheets, our images, our JavaScript files on our URL slash static. All right then. Let's save this. Let's say if our system is running, it's not because OS is not defined. We also have to import OS here. Import OS. Now this should work. It does. I start a Firefox repository and go to our base page and our system is working perfectly okay let's add our database now we can add start with anything here but i like to start with databases in most of our applications because before starting ui you must have a proper working backend at least that's what i feel so in our models.py we are gonna import some stuff before going in we will need Dates to store dates from date time import date time and I think that's enough for now. So you see we had this date and end date column in our application and that's what that's why we are importing date time here. We'll start creating our class account first model we're gonna have an account. Why an account? Because any expense you have it should be associated with some account that's a, this will be your user account right i will not add an s here because django application will do that for me now whoever owns this account should have a name that's what we are going to give it here our field this could be a real name your alias whatever we're gonna give it a max length of 100 then this account should have some expense associated with it this expense will be because we are basically creating an expense tracker system so it obviously should have expense field we're gonna give it zero default value now we have a name of the user but we also need a user who's gonna use this account right we're gonna use django's default user model auth dot user and this will be a foreign key which will have on delete equal to models dot cascade effect you can hover on our cascade function here and read what it does well it doesn't say here basically it's gonna delete all the fields associated with that user here in the account field in the account column then we are going to have some liability list 
or we can add the expense list because that's what we are making models dot many to many fields we are going to give this expense because that's what our next class will be we are going to create a class called expense which will store our expenses expenses and list of all those expenses will be stored in our account through this many to many relationship if you have learned some dbms you would know what many to many relationship is if you do not i recommend looking it up basically we're making a relationship between every field of this table to every other field of that table we're gonna we're gonna give it blank equal to true value because it could be blank there could be no expenses for any user at least when it's starting out and i think that should be enough next we're going to create a class expense with models.model we're going to name have some name here for the expense like car loan home loan whatever we're going to show that in car field of the max name i think 100 should be enough you can give it more if your needs are like that there should be some amount associated with that with any expense models dot load field default equal to zero now we are going to add our date field models dot date field it should be it should always have a value it should never be null we can set a default value for this if we are setting something of as null false we should add a default value for it date time i misspelled date time dot now dot date we are going to call our date time function and get today's date then sorry, then we need a boolean function to boolean field to check if uh, the expense is short term one time or long term we're going to add a boolean from boolean field here boolean field default equal to false it should have a value always it could be true it could be false but it must have a value then if we have a long term field if, uh, if it's a long term liability we must have a interest rate associated with it which will be a float field we can have a default equal to zero it can be null or blank because it's possible that it's a short term expenses there is no interest rate or it could be a long term expenses still there is no interest rate right and then an end date which should again be a date field and should again have a null equal to false and blank equal to false i'm sorry true not false true value because it could be blank it could be null then we are gonna calculate our monthly expenses and, and store them in this field which will be a float field again and this will be again same as above default equal to zero null equal to true blank equal to true it could be blank right it, uh, for short term expenses for a one time expense there is no monthly expense then what user is doing all this the uh, what user is associated with this expense we must add that we are gonna again use the same foreign key as above foreign key auth dot user on the lead models dot update we do not have a primary key but we have two foreign keys to another table which has a primary key right so that's a good database in case anybody was wondering if why we do not have a primary key now we're gonna add a calculate monthly func expense function 
for cells this will basically calculate the monthly expense store it in the monthly expense field now we need to know if it's a long-term investment or a short-term investment if it's the long term then only we need to calculate this monthly expense right we're gonna go sales long term if sales dot interest rate equal to equal to zero now interest rate could be zero in long term in long term expense and for that we just need to return the amount divided by the number of months divided by number of days in those months right so we're going to return self dot amount you can do this on paper to see if this formula works or not uh, self dot end date minus self dot date and divide this by 30 the parents is not going to do but it will make it clear what we are doing we are subtracting end date from subtracting a today's date from the end date and then dividing that by 30 to get the number of months and uh to get the number of months and how much amount we have to pay in those months we are then dividing that now if this is not true what we are going to do number of months is equal to we're going to store number of months here which will be end date dot year minus I think we are we are assuming something here we are going to assume that the long term expense is going to start from today we are not assuming that it's going to start from some arbitrary date which is a which could be a negative point and you can fix that by cloning or forking the github repository now we'll multiply this by 12 get the number of months add the end date month in it end date dot month and subtract today's month again then we're going to calculate the monthly rate you can calculate this by the yearly interest rate but i'm going to do make it a bit more clearer by doing so by monthly rate which is basically divide interest rate by 12 and then divide by 100 for making it more clear with the right 15 percent okay, sorry for example 15 percent interest is equal to 15 by 12 percent of monthly interest and percent is basically 100 therefore 15 by 12 by 100 i hope this makes it clear then we are going to just calculate our monthly expense which will be self dot amount whichever amount we have multiplied by the monthly rate now this function this formula i'm writing here i will provide a little explanation for it in the description section of my video so check that okay right this should work there should be another else here for considering the possibility that the it's not long term it's a short term expense then we are just gonna return self dot monthly expense whatever the default value is which is zero i believe not expense this expense okay this should work now to store this monthly expense whenever our liability model is called we must do something here which is called overriding we are going to add an add some overriding method overriding we're going to do method overriding for save function or save method of django.models it's going to take three arguments itself the auth and kw arc what this is going to do if self dot long term is true it's going to store the monthly expense in self dot monthly expense 
Now these two is are redundant and you can remove it if you want. It is gonna work just fine, but I'm not doing so. Now these two ifs are a bit redundant and you can remove it. It's gonna work just fine, but I'm not gonna do so to make to keep it clear why we are using it and what it's need. Okay, we have overrided the method and now we have to call the super method. This method basically says the basically calls the super class, which is this class here, this model, and edits it if, if we have edited anything here, and then again stores it in the database, right? So we are expensive self dot save. We are gonna call the save which we have over just overridden and pass our arcs and kw arcs, whichever argument. Django needs to pass itself, right? This should work just fine. Okay. One extra space there and one less space there. We are going to fix that to be in accordance with the Pepe to documentation of Python. Our models field is complete. We are, and once our models field is complete, we must, the Python Django is giving us our error. You have 18 unapplied migrations. We're going to apply those migrations like so. Make migrations. So we made our migrations. We made our tables. We made our models. Everything. And then we migrate that. Voila. It's done. We can run the server again. And it works without any errors. So our models are error free. Now our work here is done. I think okay then we are gonna start adding our views.py function here. Before doing so, we are gonna create our templates directory to store our, all our templates. And here we are gonna have a directory to store X tracker files, another to store registration files login register pages i think two should be enough two is enough maybe another for home it's not needed it's not necessary to store to create all the directories but it's good practice okay then in our expense tracker we're gonna create an html file we'll call it expenses list.html same with our home same with our registration, register.html, another one for login.html, right? Like so. Now, uh, in our views.py, we are gonna add some functions here. First, we will add redirect. We are also gonna import some more features for some more modules here. Import HTTP response. One very important module here is django.contrib.auth URLs or auth models import user. We are gonna import our user model which we just used in our models.py as a foreign key. With this model, we are also gonna include some more functions for this model. Django.contrib.auth import authenticate login and log out to create a form for this registration features login and signing in we are going to add some forms for auth import user creation form this is for registration basically then we are going to add our own models which we just created uh, they are stored in x tracker import models and then from dot models import pound expense is that expense or expenses expense right like so oh i'm sorry it should be in different line yep next we are going to import what we are going to import we are going to import next we are going to import from django.views.generic 
import template view. What this template view does basically, it renders a template. We pass it the path to the template and it will render it. We don't have to call the render function. It's class based template. You can look it up on our Django on the Django documentation. Next, we'll include some more generic views, which like Django dot generic views dot generic edit import form view because we are gonna import edit our form view just copy this for list view which we are not gonna edit and I think we all will also need date time so we include that as well or import I believe these should be enough for now next we are gonna start creating our functions first we will create a home function to display our home page user equal to request dot user or we can just we don't have to do this we can write write if request dot user dot is authenticated we display some page and if it's not authenticated we display some other page but right now we have not created our authentication feature so we are just gonna render request x tracker this was the name of our and expensive no home and in the home we are gonna render home.html like so then we create another function here for registration this is gonna check if the request method is post if we have to store some data or send some data to the server then it's a post method then we'll create a form with the user creation form you can read about it in this little tooltip here which is not coming for some reason in the user creation form we write request dot post because that's the argument the the other path get get argument or post argument and a form dot is valid if the data entered by the users are valid then we are gonna do something what we are gonna do we are gonna register them we are first we are gonna save that user and then we are gonna log in with that user and after the user has logged in i'm sorry after the user has logged in we are gonna return redirect to the home page we are gonna send the user back to the home page because that's where the magic will happen save that now if the form is not valid we are gonna just create another form for the user or we can just put this else here because it will be in the same loop is a creation form and in the end we are gonna return render request registration which will be our page for the registration form we are going to pass this dictionary value here to know what we are what the values are for the password and username now i will quickly get my css files for this which i'm not going to explain you can though text me and to find why i used anything in my css file okay now we have our registration function ready registration page ready we're going to go to our registered html and start writing our template for register now first of all we are going to load our static file the static directory where our css will be stored then we are going to link our style sheet here using this type text css 
hyperlink to static CSS login styles CSS. That's what my login style, uh, CSS name is. Next, we're going to start our block content. Keep in mind that you need one block content on your template file with a corresponding end content or end block to write Django. Now in our block content, we are going to add a form method equal to post. In this form method, we are going to include a class to contain a container class for our form another class for the form container and one for blur background now one class for our form now one class for our form dev class equal to form now we start writing our form first we are going to give it a h2 heading for some style text align center and write sign up this will be our sign up page so we are going to write that below that we are going to start including our form let form tags form field username label label tag for our username label we are going to add a break line here then below that it will be our username field the input fi input type field another break li break line and then we are going to add our form dot password one label tag this will be our initial password and then the django application again asks for a password confirmation that will be password two those are default names in django another br tag form dot password one input field just copy paste this here or password two like so close our div here add a break line then we will add our sub -in button another div claw button container here we'll start make a button tag we're gonna give it button button primary classes here some default classes which are which you can use in css or javascript to add some functionality it will be called a register the form will end and end block will end okay let's load this accounts we have not added anything in our urls.py yet since we are not gonna see anything here we need to go to our urls by of project first and then add firstly we'll import include function here then we are going to add here the name of our app and urls.py of that app right our text tracker dot url which we are going to include like so save that giving some error here we do not have an x tracker now we will make our x tracker urls to fix this error
new file urls.py now this should have a urls patterns here firstly we'll import some things from django.urls import path and include like so and then we'll also import our views functions because that's what we are gonna render on our urls url patterns create a list and start adding stuff first on our default page we'll have a views dot home we're going to give it a name as home then we'll have a path for our accounts register where we're going to register our self we are going to render views dot register for that page and let's name that register another one we're going to have path accounts this will be the default account for the default path for django urls for our login and logout forms views dot register we do not have to call views dot register we're going to have to call include here for django dot contrib dot auth dot urls right we since this is a list we must add commas here we must separate all the values by comma user creation form module not found django contrib auth form does not exist we must fix that error on line 5 i think it's called forms Yep, it's fixed. Let's get, go to our channel, go to our page, and we have our sign up page here. We also have our accounts login page, but we are not, we have not wrote written the HTML template for this since, and that's why that's not visible. Let's go back and start writing our login HTML. It will be sort of our register template, hence we are going to copy paste some stuff and then edit as we wish to do. There will be no password 2 here, so we are going to remove that. There will also be no password 1 here, so we can remove that as well. And we are going to change some things here. We, are, we do not need these break lines and these. There will be two break lines just here. You can add CSS classes for this and you won't need these break lines. We change this to sign in. Also, we change our input type button to we are button type to input and value to login. It will close like so. We won't need this. Below our form method, we're gonna include our CSRF token. So that there is no cross cookie connection here and above our form method post whose action will be url url login it will it's, it, sending any data to it will go to the url login link and above this form method if we are going to check if the form has errors. I'm going to display a little message here that your username and password didn't match. Please try again. Let's end this if block. like so and i think this should be enough let's go check our page which is here account login see this works right now let's start building our expense list page 
we're gonna add that as well here path expenses view start expense list view we can name it anything but i'm gonna call it that dot as view comma here and this works perfectly now we do, we do not have a view because we have not written that yet we are going to write it right below this add another space here def expense list view in our expense list view we need some things we need our model we need to display graph we need to display the list we need to display the form there are a bunch of things we must display here so first of all before going any further we are gonna add the forms.py for this because we are gonna need that to create our expense list form and let's write this this will be a very easy thing to set up. We need to import form and then from our models, we need to import expense. Class expense form form chart model form. Now, firstly, we need to check for our form. We need to consider that long term Boolean value, right? So, we are gonna write that first long term equal to this will be the default setting for that whenever the page is loaded. Required equal to false, right? Then we're gonna create a meta class. In this meta class, we will have our model as expense. Please for that model, we had name, amount, interest rate, date, end date, long week, long term. You can store this in any order you like. Next, we'll have some widgets for this, which will be a dictionary. For our name, we're gonna have forms dot text field, text input. You can use default register with the command like form dot as on our template but we are not going to use that we're going to create our own form here forms.text input so attributes equal to another dictionary here class we are naming these for our styling purposes we are going to use these in our CSS to provide any styling to this right we're gonna copy paste this a bunch of times here for amount for date or interest rate for end date and another another for long term amount will be a float input or a number input This will be a form. date input. This will display a little calendar for selecting the date. Interest rate will again be a number input. End date will be a date input. And long term will be a checkbox input for the Boolean. Right? Like so. Now for these date inputs, we also have to 
add some more attributes apart from class we need to tell our file that uh, we have this date input is actually of type date same here our date input is of sorry of type date input is of type date like so now we need to clean these inputs whatever we have provided here user can provide anything random which should not be expect as accepted that's what that's why we're gonna clean these inputs with our def clean self our clean data will be cleaned using super and now we have to write our logic for our long term if we have a long term set as true then there must be some value in the interest rate and in the end date otherwise it's not needed right so we're gonna get a long term equal to clean data dot get long term value start date as well which will be our date clean data dot sorry not pet we have to get date I didn't include this here now if our long term value is set to true interest rate will be equal to clean data dot get interest rate similarly the end date the amount and then the cleaned data for long term will be set to true now if long if it was if it was false then we just need two types of data clean data and date equal to none and interest rate equal to none and at the end we are gonna return clean data so our forms.py is complete we're gonna close that come here and start writing our views for expense list now since we are using a form here we do not need a expense list function instead we'll need a class for that and instead of providing requ request argument we'll provide the form view which we imported in the beginning it's for a view for displaying a form and rendering a template response the template view renders template form view renders forms right Now here we will also use the template view for giving our template name here. We are gonna call it expenses and name it expense list.html form class equal to expense form that we just created in our forms.py. This one. and then we need success URL this will be the home default home page URL because we are gonna edit our home in a bit def form valid self form if our form is valid what do we do if form valid we call that in our expense select okay now where did we take in our login 
we checked if form has errors the form was valid that's the function we have to write here it's a default function for django and it's the default forms but since we are creating the form we need to write that it will first take the account um, model account objects get or create user equal to I am sorry get or create user equal to self dot request dot user Next, we need our expense equal to ex expense name equal to form dot lean data name. That's what we're gonna store in our expense model here. For amount, for um, interest rate, date, long end date, and I think the long term, we should be enough. Since it's a tuple, we must add the commas here. We have amount, we have interest rate. We have date, we have end date, we have the long term value, the boolean value, and we also must need a user with whom the data is associated with, like so. Now we are going to save this expense is calling our overridden function. Here's what where we are calling that overridden function we created in our models.py. If you remember this def save, right? Now account dot liability. I'm sorry, account dot expense. List add expense. That expense list will have all the list list of all the expenses, and then we return super dot form valid form. Now we need another function here to get the context data which we are gonna pass to our HTML for graph for the list etc context data get context data or set context data whatever you want to name it self from default arguments context equal to super dot get context data real and time arguments user equal to self dot request in user With whom the data is associated with, and then accounts equal to account dot objects dot filter for this user. We need only the account of this user. We do not need account of everybody else. Now we are going to need two things here. We are going to create a graph. We are going to create the expense list. We already have created the form. There are three things in our UI, as you saw earlier. So we'll import our plotly views here, so a plotly function, import plotly, you can write import plotly directly, but I'm going to write import plotly.px or dot express as px and from plotly dot graph objects import everything. 
we are going to need a few more things here so we are going to include those as well from date util dot relative delta import relative delta this relative delta will be used for manipulating our date time field date time values now we also need a safe string for passing for change converting our Django uh, JSON file for plotly to the HTML renderable file Django utils dot safe string otherwise it will create some errors and it will display Django etc import mark safe markdown safe this stands for markdown safe I think these should be enough. I am thinking what else we do could we need. Now we will also need some functions for calculating the sum of our expenses and the number of our expenses, etc., which will display in our, on our graph and on our list. So we will get our from Django DB models import sum count f that's what we are going to need and i think that should be enough for now plotly requires pandas to be installed which i have not installed i will do that quickly pandas it's installed let's run server again expense form is not defined okay Expense, expense form is not defined because we have not included that yet here so we must also we are going to import that here from dot forms import expense form and our server runs perfectly let's add our context data now what else do we need here we need to create an empty dictionary for storing our expense data to display in the list and another for storing our expense data for the graph you can do so in the same but then uh, you will have several duplicated fields for in your monthly list which are fine for graph but not for the monthly list that's why we are going to create two of these from account and accounts first thing first we are going to loop through the account and check it and see all the liabilities and then store it or we're going to call it expense expense is equal to account dot Expense is equal to account dot expense list dot all. Now for expenses, expense and expenses. The this graph this will be for our graph. This loop will be storing all the data in the graph, the expense data graph field, which we just created in that dictionary. Right. Now for expense and expenses, we are gonna check if expense was long term or not and if there is some monthly value for that expense expense dot monthly expense if both of those are true i'll have to check what i named here monthly expenses that's what i named that else write that like so and current date Will be whatever the liability date is or expense date is then while current we're gonna loop make create another loop to include all the dates from the current date to the end date so that it displays the long-term expenses correctly in the bar graph while current date is less than equal to expense dot End date the 
the year month will be set to current date dot prf time person y person m this will store date in the format like this 2023 08 for 2023 August right next we are gonna check if year month not in expense if we have not added this in the graph dictionary yet we add that expense data graph for year month will have uh, an empty array which we are gonna populate now next expense data graph the empty array will be appended I wrote appended it should be append like so we have our name which we are gonna take from the expense dot name whatever name the expense have some um, amount here we are not gonna take amount but we're but the monthly amount for that expense right because we need monthly amount for every expense from next we need the date so date and another for end date expense dot end date like so below that will store our current date equal to current date minus relative delta month equal to one this is for looping this is for moving to the next month this would be plus not minus of course months equal to one this will move our current date to next month now we need an else block for if data is not long term if the expense is not long term here we are gonna store our year month as the same format since dot eight dot st rf time you can store that store this year month uh, above the loop and it's gonna work fine or in that loop inside that loop I have done so person y person m if year month not in expense data graph if year month not in expense data graph we again create an empty graph for that year month and then we start appending that here this must be appended uh, outside of that will this block same here dot append dot that now if it's not long term that's gonna be only three values name amount which will be amount here because the monthly expense will be zero such a case and date there will be no end date because it will be a short term one time expense right okay this error is because i am putting this else here but this else is for this is long term expense and this current month will be the same line as that if block because it will be outside that okay this should work fine all right then now we need to go through this loop once again
for account then account for our monthly expense list now you can just copy paste and edit around a bit and that's what i'm going to do i'm not going to explain that line by line again because it's basically the same thing but we do not have this file loop for considering all the dates between current date and end date okay then so we have added our so we have added our loop for monthly expenses list it does not have that while loop we are not considering all the dates from current to end we are only considering the expense in every month you can read it and understand it just fine in the github repository now we'll create an array of dictionary for the aggregated data aggregated data this will basically store all our data we, we need to pass to the html template expenses will be the sum of item amount for item and value i'm gonna word wrap that and then for item and value and then for key value pairs key value and expense data graph dot item for we are going to store the aggregated data for all the year months its expenses which will be the sum of all the expenses in that particular time period and from our expense data graph right that's our context expense data which will be passing to which will be storing in here and in context aggregated data which will store where will store the aggregated data like so now we need some graph data which will create now and use that to generate our graph month will be equal to item year month for item and aggregated data and then why is this giving an error here it's not a tuple it's a dictionary i miswrote the bracket there expenses same thing item expenses for item in aggregated data we need just two things we need the months and we need the expenses for that month now that graph data is complete and we need to use this data to create a plotly graph we can yeah, just pass this graph data chart and we are going to store the chart in the same dictionary to make it easier later on if we ever need it and generate graph we are going to call this function that and pass on the graph data to it the current graph data now we'll also create same field in our context called graph data here we'll mark save we'll call that mark save the markdown save function explicitly mark a string as save for html output purposes right we need to mark this save because that graph should be displayed safely and not as a javascript code or json code or whatever so graph data chart that's what we're going to pass here and then we return the context like so now we need a generate graph function using month and expenses 
So we're gonna create that here. Def generate graph with graph data. Now in this graph data, we can just name this data instead of graph data. We can name it anything. We're gonna create a figure using plotly express function bar where we're gonna create a bar graph. The x axis will represent number of months or the name of months. The y axis will represent the expenses. And the title of the graph will be monthly expense. Right, like so. Then we're gonna update our graph for our layout changes. It will be a tuple. X axis should have a range slider because so that the graph doesn't take over the all the screen size we have and go beyond that. We are gonna give it a range slider for some fixed input size and gonna name that visible true. We can write visible false if you don't want to look at the scroll bar. Then we're gonna cha change the color of our bars and the background and everything else. For that we need paper bg color which will create change the background color of our bar graph we are going to make it transparent so zero 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 the a value here is important it's for making the graph transparent i will copy this line for our plot bg color so to change our background color of our plot and then the font color will be RGBA 0, 0, 0, 1. It will be black. You can change it to anything else. Then we're going to update traces to change color of our bars. Marker color equal to, we're going to give it a shade of green. You can give it anything. Now we'll create a JSON file for fig to JSON and then return that graph JSON like so. Now let's look at our project here. I do not have any user yet, so we are going to create some user first. Register Azure, or instead of doing that, I will create a super user. Python manage dot create super user, so that I don't have to follow the rules protocol here. Okay, I just have a two letter password that I have everywhere else. Instead of logging, registering, we're gonna log in. I stopped that server. We're gonna log into Azure with password one two. Page not found because accounts profile. It's gonna redirect our us to accounts profile. But we want to be redirected to the home page. And here we are going to add a field login redirect URL. And we are going to pass it home. So accounts. Login, we write Azure 1 2. So, this is our home page, and since our application is not giving any errors, our views.py is just fine, but we have not displayed any value here, so it's not going to show anything right now. 
So we go to our expenses list and we start writing our expense template now. But before that, I'm gonna write my home HTML because we have not done anything in that yet. And uh, it should display that page firstly before anything else. And that's why that's important as well. So firstly, we'll write load static for the CSS. And we're gonna write HTML, a head, some title, give it home. A link for the style sheet. Percent static CSS home dot CSS. Next in the body, you can have a block content and an end block and in this end block and block content we are going to start writing our dev our first dev firstly we are going to check if the user is authenticated If so, we are going to welcome that user. We are going to name it. We are going to write name of the user, right? Like so, user dot username. And we will give us a little link here to open the expenses page. We'll call it open expenses and else if user is not authenticated we are gonna display a dev class called home an h2 tag Welcome a div class register for storing the register registration links percent URL register register we're gonna copy this for login login like so and then and end if block here like so now our page we do not have a CSS at home CSS static CSS, home CSS, we have that, I think this error is because I have not stored that in string value, string, URL expenses, there is no reverse function,
it's called expenses i think i have not named it expenses and that's why it's giving such an error Ticked object has no attribute item. Right. We are going to name this one as expenses. and our expensive page is shown here because i have logged in as azure so we are seeing that now if i log out and go to the home page it's going to display welcome register login i log in go to azure one two welcome azure log and open expense now here we do not have the here we have some errors in our views.py which i'm not sure why are happening so if you check here the error is here for excel data.graph item of course item variable does not exist in that its name should be items with an s it's a small mistake but Yep, it works. Did you mean color? In the font color, I also wrote wrong spelling there. Font, font color. Received that. It should be with an H. Now, template does not exist. This is the error we wanted because there is no expense list.html well there is but there's nothing in it it's in the x tracker and we are passing it expenses x tracker expense list.html Where is it connect? Where is it checking? Okay, it does not exist at we're going to get back to that firstly, but before we need to change our expense list.html so we'll firstly change that i just figured out the error it's actually that i have again misspelled one name here in the views.py it's not expense list it's expenses list this should work just fine it's working fine right now we need to write our templates firstly we'll start with our load static function then we're gonna create an head link rel style sheet or static css styles.css copy that same line below with a style.css there are two style sheets i have it's a bit mess but i hope you bear with me there then i'm gonna add a script file for adding the bar graph plot link https cdn dot plot dot ly slash plotly 
slash plot lane sorry slash plot lane latest dot men dot js and we're gonna close that script like so now with our head closed we'll start our block content Start our body, start our script, src another, we need some jQuery here. Code.jQuery.com, jQuery 3.6.0, min.js. You can use a different version, but this one has all the features we need. You can use a more newer version if you wish. Now we'll create a, another script for our long term checkbox for displaying the interest rate and end date field if the checkbox is turned on and not displaying them if it is turned off, right? Script. We we'll start our document. Dot ready. Function. You can use an arrow functions here if you want. I'm not very efficient with that, so I'm not going to use them. Long term checkbox. You can name that anything and we're gonna provide some ID to that. ID long term like so. Another field for another variable for long term fields, whatever fields you want to display if that checkbox is turned on. So here we need hashtag interest rate, the ID for interest rate field and end date field right now firstly initially the starting will be long term fields will be hidden after that long term checkbox whenever it's turned on the change function is called and it's turned on it's gonna call a function and then it's going to check long term whenever it's the whenever we click on that function whenever on the checkbox this function will be called long term checkbox dot is now we check if it is checked or it's not checked right if it's checked we write long term Fields dot show like so, but if it's not checked, we write long term fields dot hide like that. Semicolon there, semicolon there, and the script is closed. Our script is done now. We start writing our ifs for the HTML content and the graph and everything else. First, we'll have a div class for main. This will be our main class. Then we'll have another div class for our image. We're going to include an image. SRC will be stored in the static images folder. Static images logo.png we don't need to display any art there you can if you wish but i don't have to now we'll have another class we'll call that main one because it's the first class first div inside main another one for graph 
in this graph one will have one for bar chart and this one will have an h2 field for monthly expenses bar chart then a div for displaying our plotly chart and ID also will be plotly chart so if that it will be controlled by JavaScript below and that is done that's done and the main one we are gonna call another div and name that expenses because this will show the expense list here I will give another heading for expenses list this will be named expense and this will be named expenses yeah I did say I was not creative with names I'm just I just had to get whatever names I could think of at that very particular moment. In here, we are going to need a loop to go through all the classes for year month, expenses, in expense, data, dot items. We're going to go dev class equal to month. This will display all the months. H3 month year month. Next, we'll have another loop inside this for displaying every single liability or expense for expense in expenses div class equal to expense explicit I'm going to name it that then there will be a div class for left side and this one we are going to have the name of the expenses expense.name And below that, we're gonna check if the if expense dot long term is true. We're gonna span a class for displaying both the from and to date. Date. From expense dot date br to expense dot end date. I'm gonna word wrap that to make it a bit more clear. Now we need a else block. This will display only single span or name will be same date, but it will just display the date 
the current date, the, the date of the start of the expense, that is, and start date, like so. And then this if block will end and if this div will end now we need another div for displaying the amount we'll call it right because it will be on the right side of the screen and that particular div h2 dollar expense dot amount you can write a rupee symbol here if you wish now in the right we have the expense amount you can use the dollar symbol here you can use a rupee symbol here but i'm not using that because well i do not have the rupee symbol on my keyboard okay then we'll end this div here and create a br and then end that for loop and for like so then there's another L loop here which we need to end another end for there couple diffs will be closed and I think here we'll add another div for the form of the expenses. We'll call that lower, I guess. Div class. Um, whatever. What do we need to name that? X form. H2 add long term liability or one time expense. We'll use the form method equal to post here. Then we need to add this line again for, for our CSRF token. This, will, this basically generates a CSRF token and saves it in our local session storage. Now this will have our form dot long term dot label tag. With this label tag we'll have form dot long term as well just below that. Then a couple of break lines. You're gonna, you can store them in different devs and manipulate that as you like, but it's too much work and I'm not up to it. Okay, this should be enough. There are four things we're gonna need. Remove these. Here we need name, name of the expense amount for that expense the date and below the date we need the end date which we are gonna put in a different id so that i can manipulate that using my javascript i'm gonna Copy that again for that end date, end date, we don't need these here tags and they're okay. I'm sorry I copied that twice. Now with the break line again, we'll have one more for the interest rate 
interest rate interest rate right and below that we'll have a button type submit class button button success add liability or add x whatever you want to name it the form will close the div will close and all the div will close now we need to write our javascript here where graph data equal to graph data safe if it is safe then we create a new plot using plotly plotly chart which will be the id the graph data will be dot data graph data dot layout like so close the script close the body close the end block i didn't close this so close that here All right then, uh, let's see if our expenses page is working or not. And voila, it's working perfectly. Our image is here, our bar chart div, our expenses div, everything is here, perfect. Now let's add some expense here. I bought shoes for $100, a bit too much. $50 on this date. And we are seeing an error. Cleaned date. Okay, it should be cleaned data. And views by line 61. Here. Yeah. It should be cleaned data. It must have been some autocomplete that messed up cleaned date. There is no cleaned date now. Recent that name expenses are not defined in the models.py expert tracker models.py line 27.safe line 27 name expense recent data open expenses our shoes are being, are being seen here it works perfectly now if we add some long term data for loan 200 or uh, of 200 is a bit less 10,000 for 1908 2025 15% interest calculate monthly expenses not defined it says nt models dot by line 26 it's a function here we need to call that function from itself and should be named that since object has no attribute interest on line 36 of models.py there's no interest, it should be interest rate. Monthly is not defined on line 37. One plus this will be one plus monthly rate. Monthly has no attribute monthly expense, it's monthly expenses because
and it works perfectly here. Yeah. We had to fix a little bit error here. Uh, return round monthly expense with two decimal places. That we missed that while writing the our calculate monthly expense function. So please fix that, and the code should work just as expected. Perfectly fine. We have our graph, we have our expense list, our form, everything working perfectly fine. So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe our channel, like this video, and hit that bell icon. We'll see you in the next one.